and welcome to another Regal Mystery Movie Review. This movie played on March 18th, 2024. And the Regal Mystery Movie was... Wicked Little Letters. When people in Little Hampton, including conservative local Edith, begin to receive letters full of hilarious profanities, rowdy Irish migrant Rose is charged with the crime. Suspecting that something is amiss, the town's women investigate. Rated R. I was really hoping I wouldn't have to complain about this again, but this movie was also previously released in multiple countries prior to the showing. It came out in February in the UK and early March in the Netherlands, Belgium, and France. Now, it doesn't officially release here in the United States until April 5th. I understand there's probably not a lot of crossover between the two. So if somebody sees a movie in Europe, they're probably not going to see it here in the United States. But I would still like for these movies to be unreleased, as promised by Regal. Anyway, Olivia Coleman plays Edith Swan, a middle-aged spinster who lives at home with her elderly parents. She gives off a rather holier-than-thou type of attitude with a very mean streak underneath. And Olivia Coleman gives a great performance, really treading that line. Now, our Irish counterpart is Rose Gooding, played by Jessie Buckley. Now, it is important to mention that she's Irish because it adds another layer to the prejudice that she faces here in this movie. She's a strong-willed, independent woman with a softer side for her daughter and her boyfriend. Jessie Buckley does a great job of showing both that strength and that tenderness throughout the movie. Timothy Spall plays Edward Swan, Edith's father. He's a mean and cruel man who believes that women should be subservient and decent at all times. He is especially condescending to his daughter, Edith. Spall really plays this character perfectly and makes the audience absolutely hate him. Rounding out the main cast is Anjana Vassan, who plays woman police officer Gladys Moss. The title of woman police officer is another sign of the times in which the movie takes place. She's one of the first, if not the first, female officer in that precinct. So the male officers are rather reluctant to call her police officer, so they give her the title of woman police officer instead. She's basically treated like a secretary, as you would expect. She doesn't even have handcuffs. <gasps> officer Moss is a morally upstanding character that wants to see justice serve, but only through thorough detective work. Now this is at odds with the constable chief. The supporting cast does a great job of complimenting the main actors. The townsfolk have their own personalities that shine through. Some may be considered a little bit cliche, but I feel like overall it works out pretty well in the movie. Now, this movie is rated R, but to me it feels kind of like a soft rated R. There wasn't any blood, gore, violence, terror, or anything like that. Just a lot of foul and sexual language, but even that is contained in the letters that are being written. Plus, a lot of that language is antiquated British slang terms like foxy and fanny. And I feel like that really reflects the theme of decency in the film. The fact that these naughty words can warrant an R rating. There was also a brief moment of rear-end nudity, but that's it. <whistles> Nothing you can't see on normal cable television. This based on a true story film begins with Edith Swan, who is the main recipient of these anonymous wicked little letters. This kickstarts the whodunit aspect of this movie. Edith and her family are flabbergasted by the contents of these letters. Raunchy, sexual letters. <whistles> These letters are the main source of humor throughout the film. We get to see a lot of people's reactions to the words and phrases that are used in these letters. These reactions provide a hilarious look into the conservatism of the 1920s. The effectiveness of this joke does run a little thin by the end of the movie, though. Edward casts the blame onto his neighbor, Rose Gooding. He already dislikes her because she's free-willed, independent, and Irish. She and Edith also used to be very close friends. This accusation is brought to the police and they are ready to automatically lock her up with very little evidence. This is where woman police officer Gladys Moss comes into play. She doesn't think it's right to accept Edward's accusation as true without evidence. So she starts her own investigation, enlisting the help of the town's eccentric residents. About halfway through the movie, the audience is shown the identity of the crass letter author. This effectively shifts the tone of the movie from a whodunit to a race against time to prove people's innocence and guilt. The reveal wasn't very shocking to me, but did it help move the story forward? Surprise. Officer Moss's investigation is well done and well filmed. It has a lot of the dry British humor that I enjoy, and not to mention a few visual gags as well. Plus, we get some intense courtroom scenes that allow Olivia Coleman and Jesse Buckley to really shine and show their acting range. The conclusion of the movie is both satisfying and succinct. The story wraps up nicely and the viewer is left with a complete experience. There is also an underlying theme of feminism and women's equality throughout the movie. We are also given little snippets about the women's fight for suffrage. 
which is the right to vote, by the way. Yes. Many male characters are consumed with keeping women decent and in their place. We see it at the police station. We see it with Edward's heavy-handed parenting style with his middle-aged daughter, Edith. Plus with how men react to Rose's cursing, drinking, and dancing. I feel like this theme is subtle enough to build the characters and the story, but not too over the top where it's going to offend the anti-woke boys. Ooh. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> huh? Uh, woke feminism, women's lib. <clears throat> Well, that's one way to keep them quiet. <laughs> Visually, the movie's pretty standard. I think the shots follow the pacing of the film very well, though. It does not suffer from the trend of using modern filming techniques in a period piece, which I talked about in previous movie reviews, like in One Life and Killers of the Flower Moon. Everything feels correct and timeline accurate. There were a few instances where I had a hard time following the dialogue. Sometimes the characters talked really fast and mixed in British lingo that made it kind of hard to follow. Uh, Fortunately, this usually happens when they're talking about the letters or reading from the letters, so you're not really missing any vital story parts. But I blame this more on my hearing and my brain than anything that the filmmakers did. Duh. Wicked Little Letters is an unexpected but pleasant surprise for a mystery movie. It isn't a movie I would go see in the theaters or even watch streaming, but it was an enjoyable way to spend the evening. That is why I'm giving the film Wicked Little Letters a wicked, but not so little, 7 out of 10. While the story may seem a little bit familiar, the cast does a great job of bringing it to life. Oi! Did you see the Regal Mystery movie, Wicked Little Letters? If you did, postmark all your comments in the mail bin down below. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more foxy fanny content just like this. Bye bye bye!